So as you can see from the title right here, LeBron James under fire for his response to Tyree Nichols' death. He made a tweet. Obviously, when things like this happen, LeBron does come out and he does speak on them. So I'm going to read LeBron's tweet. I'm going to let you know what he said. I'm going to let you know how I feel about what he said in the response to LeBron James in itself. But this is one thing I'll say. One thing I'll say about LeBron James or any other celebrity, I understand with what's going on with this situation, why certain celebrities don't speak out and say anything. Because when you're a celebrity, it kind of don't matter what you say. Most times when you speak, you're going to get too much backlash, too much opinions on what you said to even your, your opinion on something being worth enough to even speak on. Because at the end of the day, nothing good is really going to come from you speaking on something. So let's just get to it. So LeBron's tweet regarding the death of Tyrone Nicholface's backlash. So this is what he said. He said this. He said, we are our own worst enemy. James said in response on Twitter, seemingly referencing the officers being black. So there's the five black officers killed a black man. Black on black thing going on. Obviously, when you hear black on black crime, you hear these things uh, being said. People on social media get triggered by that and they attack when they hear that because they feel like it's deflecting from the real problem. The real problem isn't black on black. The real problem is the systems that have been set up that create that type of black on black crime, which historically makes sense, right? Historically, black people tend to harm black people more uh, because they're in close proximity. When it comes to this police situation, you know, police are inherently, you know, more probably targeted towards black people because they see on daily basis that I, I would say they see on daily basis that black people commit the more crimes. So I feel like when they do see black people, they feel inherently weary about interacting. That's not me saying that. That's how I feel like a police officer would look at when they see black people in the, in the, in the commission of a crime or in the, their response to black people in what someone claims there may be a crime going on there. So he tweeted that. And then uh, he never moved past page six of the Malcolm X book. One user replied, you know, just referencing that he had the, Michael, the, the Malcolm X book in his hand during a press conference and they asked him about it. And, you know, they say LeBron's the biggest capper. He probably didn't even read the book, but regardless. Another wrote, are you talking about the Lakers? Because if you're talking about this current situation, bruh, nah, wrong time. So James also retweeted a post from MSNBC analyst that wrote, what's really clear about some of the reaction to the murder of Tyree Nichols is that we failed to fully understand race and its construction as a systematic tool. The entire system of policing sees the black body as a problem, no matter who pulls the trigger. And he replied with that saying too factual. So I mean, like to me, two things can be at the same time. It's like, damn, you could be disappointed like, as a black person, right? You could be disappointed that five black men beat the shit out of another black man when you would think that they would have a little bit more compassion for said man. You would think so, right? You would think that that could be an argument or that could be a conversation that's being taking place on social media. Like, damn, we got these brothers coming, knocking the door down and whooping their ass. Cause you see all, like I said, you see all these people saying, you know, Hey, more black people should get into judgeships. More black people should get into the law enforcement. They should become lawyers because we can't help. They, we can't be mad. These white people who don't know nothing about us, where we from, yada, yada, yada. And they treat us the way they do. But if we become the police officers, if we, you know, get into the streets, things will change because we know how to handle each other. That's what a lot of the argument is on social media as far as black people getting more into the judicial system because we can help ourselves. That's, that's what the, the arguments I see are. And LeBron just pointed out, like, damn, we are worst enemy, right? It's kind of leading to the black on black crime. It's like, okay, y'all complain about these people, but black people kill more people than anybody else. We can get in all the nuanced conversation of proximity and this and that. And we can get in all that. But with this situation, when you see five black guys beating the shit out of another black guy and they're police officers, it do make you like, damn. It make you have distrust for it. Like, damn, we can't even have the black dudes be police officers and won't kill us. Like, some people might think that would at least, you know, give me a little bit benefit of the doubt. A little bit of, you know, because they daddy black, they uncle black, they cousin black, they, they sons are black. But clearly, with those five at least, it didn't matter who the guy was. Because power corrupts power. Power power is a corruptible force. Stronger than anything. Our brains ain't able to really handle power. When you give people power who've never had power over people, the chance that they become corrupt is more likely than not. And that's what seems to happen with these police officers. Or just anybody in general. There was a movie out where, I think it was a movie. I don't know if it was a movie or YouTube thing I was watching. But a professor, I believe at Stanford, one of these nice big Ivy League schools, did a did a did a, a social experiment where he said, "Hey, I'm gonna give these random college kids, bring them in. Some of y'all become prisoners. Some of y'all become what's it called? Some of y'all become the guards. And let's see what happens. These are regular college kids. And as through the study goes on, the people who are guards 
Let that power to do whatever they want over these people corrupt them, no matter who they are. I could have been sitting next to you in psych class two days ago, but now I'm a guard, you're a prisoner. The power is corrupting me. So like I said, to me, in my opinion, it don't matter who you get in there. Black people to police, black people, white people to police, white people, Mexicans to police, Mexicans, Asians. It don't matter because that power will corrupt any of them against their own people. You see that all around the world, even with like black nations or Asian nations, like your people will oppress you as well. Like let's just, we got to stop that fairy tale narrative that your people will oppress you as well. That's just the facts of it. So I don't even think that none of LeBron is necessarily saying is wrong. I just know when you say something like that on social media, people are going to be like, oh, you're blaming black people. Um, don't say that. It takes away from the real conversation. And like the person said that he agreed with at the top, the real conversation is the way the police system views black people and kind of looks at them as disposable when it comes to police interactions with black people and how they are already guilty when you approach these people out and about. Because like I said in my other video when I was reacting to the Jason Whitlock statements, if this was an older white guy who looked like he's on Wall Street, and even if he was doing the exact same thing Tyree Nichols was doing, I feel like they would have been a lot more delicate with the way they were handling. They wouldn't have been smashing him with the baton. I don't believe they would have been punching him in the face multiple times till he goes limp and kicking him in the head. I don't think that would have took place. But once again, I don't know if it's necessarily, you know, black people not really having respect for black people, which there's a conversation that can be had. And you can get all the nuances of why poverty, this, that, slavery. We can get all that. I get it. But it's still, regardless of all the nuances, it's still a factor that plays a role. So, you know, LeBron, he got drugged through the mud for this. Um, people saying, read the room. People saying, obviously, you haven't got past the page of the, of the Malcolm X book. But, I mean, that's just the way it is, man. It, it's just what it is. When you're a celebrity, especially a guy like LeBron, maybe LeBron thought this, he was going to knock out the park with this one. But honestly, with LeBron, his responses to things lately, the past couple I've seen, ain't really been the best ones. Like when that guy shot that, that, that young black woman who was trying to stab the other black woman and he killed her. I get it. It's tragic. The girl died. If that was my daughter, I'd be upset and sad. But he literally shot somebody who was about to stab somebody. So I, LeBron like was tweeting him out and like posting a picture of him. You're next. Like, I mean, he saved that black girl's life. So I don't know why you kind of jumped out the window with that one specifically. But let me know what y'all think about this uh, down in the comments down below. Make sure you subscribe to not subscribe already. SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, all that good stuff like that. I'll see you guys next time. It's your boy D-Friend. Peace.